degrees. There were storms in the forecast for last night and today, but it has cleared up. It's a great night in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They were expecting a sellout crowd of about 18,000. Blatko Andonovsky, head coach of the USA, experiencing, like we said, a very rare two-game losing streak. Last time they lost two straight, 2017. Whenever they lost three straight, you'd have to go back to 1993. Germany's in green. They take the kickoff. USA is in white. Pop will play it back. Pop number 11 is the player to watch for sure. For the Germans, slow ball back to goal is cleared away. The U.S. trying to recover it in the circle. That was Lavelle who got a piece. And the first foul is called by our match referee Odette Hamilton. She is from Jamaica. U.S. in the ball with Gurma pushing it to the left. Gurma and Cook getting the start as the center backs tonight. From the far side, that pass is picked. U.S. was concerned about their passing game in the last couple of games, Ali, especially in the offensive third. Yeah, it, they were just off. I mean, the players admitted it. Vlaco has spoken about it plainly. The reality is it wasn't good enough technically, and that's one of the areas that they have to improve upon tonight to break down a really organized defense in this German side that is, in fact, lined up in a four-back, so they are sticking with their tried-and-true system that we've seen time and time again. The push pass from Fox to the left side. Cut off there by Germany, and it's going to be lost out of play. 23 is Zara Dorsen, who gets the start tonight, her 41st international appearance for Germany. And a couple of wrinkles on this German side. No Oberdorf in that sixth spot. I think you were expecting, or at least I was expecting Hendrik on that back line, one of the starting center backs we typically have seen. Maybe they'll rotate the squad with another game on Sunday. We'll find out. Ball is played back dangerously to goal. Froome's good with their feet, moving it to the right. Germany will bring it upfield. They lost in the European final to England 2-1. to one. Their only loss of that tournament. They've been great in World Cup qualifying as well as the Euros. And that was the first European final that they ever lost after winning eight of those titles. And it could have been a different story had they had Pop available. Yeah. She was injured over the course of the tournament. Early foul, Sophia Huerta getting the step on Buell. She just drags her down from behind. Tactical, allowing Germany to get back and organized in shape. Casey Murphy in red will push it to Germa. Germa, rookie of the year and defender of the year. How many people have done that? She's the first in NWSL history. That's amazing. Huerta's pass. That's picked again. The U.S. have lost a couple of those in the early going. Ball played into space. Decent ball. Not decent enough, but it's followed through. Oof. Foul. Free kick here for Germany. And it looks like Germany has got more pace up top with Alexandra Pop playing in almost a double pivot role in midfield. Now they've got three front runners. Frag on one of them that has the ability to threaten that back line. She gets the edge. That touch is such an important one. She cuts off Emily Fox's recovery and earns that foul just by the angle of that touch. Frygon with 12 goals and just 16 appearances for her country. Magul is the deeper of the two that might take this free kick. Wall is being set up. Germany, one of the better teams throughout the years on set pieces. It's Magul sending it up there and just over Casey Murphy. And you've got a couple players that could step up and take this. Magul is the one who's going to test Murphy, but that one never going to test her. Rising, Casey Murphy has it covered. Not a lot of pace on that, not dipping enough to really challenge. Back to live action. Magul is on the ball, number 20 in the green of Germany. Pushed forward for Freigong, and now to the right it comes. Fox collects. U.S. was under pressure. 
Good start here for Germany in the fifth minute. U.S. back in their own half. Under that pressure, forced back. There's Magul after it. With some help from Flygon. Throw in for the U.S. That is Martina Voss Tecklenburg, a former player, played in three World Cups and in one Olympic tournament. And a previous manager of Switzerland, right? Yeah. We spoke with her when she was that manager. Germany back on the ball on the right side. Tucked into Weil, cutting it back. Flygon couldn't get it. And fouls in trying to win the ball back. Here in the sixth minute, that is our officiating staff. It's led by the Jamaican Hamilton in the middle. Unlike the England friendly, no VAR tonight. Ball pushed forward, and now Magul reaches, collects, fighting pop. No, 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 stop. To the left, Rao. Felicitas Rao's pass ahead. Looks to get the return. It's behind her. Knocked away to the left. Buell. That's blocked. Buell again. Left side. It falls to Magoo. Looking, shooting, went near post. And trying to beat Casey Murphy. And this is a really good look at what Germany wants to do. They're getting a 3v3 in the wide channel, but it's Magul's movement out of midfield that so often causes problems for teams. They drag over Andy Sullivan. Now your six is out of position, and your center backs can't slide and step in time to get any pressure on this shot. And it's really just a matter of Magul pulling that and not putting it on frame to test Murphy. But that's a good look at how Germany wants to try to get at the U.S. One ring at least. Tuck the head to Buell. Uh, Germany is on the front foot. They have been since the opening kick. They really have, and it was a turnover from the U.S. in their build-out that allowed Germany to squeeze in. You can see they're picked up man-to-man, -man, then they pick up the free ball, and here's where the combination ensues. It threatens in behind Alana Cook. From the Magul corner to the near post, it comes back out. Magul is free. Flag stays down. I think she thought she might have been offside. That ball is now out for, should be a USA throw-in. Three goals from a goal in the Euros, including one against England as they try to come back in that game. Yeah, that was a massive one. And before she scored that equalizer, she had a very similar-looking opportunity that she didn't convert. So those are the movements in the goal, times to perfection out of midfield. Gong is after it and fouls. Slow start for the U.S., but we're only in the eighth minute. Yeah, and you've got to credit, you know, the German press, counter press. Here it is, where they've just got numbers around it. Lavelle does well just to see that one out of bounds and get her team out of a little bit of pressure there. The press is something that the U.S. does normally well, but not in the last two games. Players spoke about that yesterday. Ball played into space. Morgan and Smith are up. And Pugh to the right. Played in and saved by Frooms. It's Mal Pugh, Smith, and Morgan all up there. Buell the other way. Held up there in the right by Germany. Given away. Lindsey Horan, number 10 in the white of the USA. Horan playing now with Lyon in France. Lavelle. Mal Pugh. Huerta. Alana Cook leading all USA players in minutes played in 2022. Back to Casey Murphy. Stanford University. Quick down. Kept by Morgan. Important movement there from Morgan because she drops down to become a plus one and be an option for Huerta. Here's the U.S. on the attack. Played wide to the left side. Initially by Fox. Sophia Smith. 
Cutting ball. Bucks. It's a settle there by Pugh. Pushed out. Germany looking to move it out. They go side to the left. In the 10th minute. Both coaches up. Encouraging their team as Germany attacks on the right. They've got numbers four. And USA scrambling back. Ball needed to be better. Goes to Magoon instead. Not the intended target. And it's been open in the early going since that spell of possession from Germany. But here came the U.S. Just a long direct ball that's flicked on Balenzi Haran. And Alex Morgan does well. Just back to goal. Clean it up. Allow someone that's facing the field that sees everything. And that's Rose Lavelle. She picks out Sophia Smith. And we think we know how it's going to end. But she cuts off her own angle here as she goes away from goal and makes it easy for Fromes to get down and cover that one up. Lavelle. Near sideline, not much room there. Back to Huerta. Germa from the San Diego Wave who made the playoffs. First expansion team to make the playoffs in MWSL history. On this left side, Fox. Too slow on that pass. It was knocked away. Germany recovering. Here they come. Ball played forward. A bit too long for Freigon. Freigon spent a couple of years at Penn State University. Just throw it. Cook from Oil Rain. Left side, Gurma. 12 minute. Good tempo to this one. Yeah, you can see Lindsay. You can Lindsay Rand is clearing the space for Gurma then to travel with it. And that's where they're going to try to unbalance Germany. Maybe here on that deflection. U.S. getting numbers in the box. Ball is played across, it's deflected out. Haran settling, looks for the help. Nice ball, short. Pugh in front of Morgan. It's cleared away by Germany. U.S. on the recovery. Smith, nice on the trickery. To Fox. Heavily Fox with the cross, headed up. Second ball, cleared by Pop. U.S. will send it in off the deflection. Safe play by Frums. But better from the U.S. It is. And you can see how many numbers are committing to the attack. You get that outside back. Adding the advantage in that wide channel. She serves the box. And the U.S. was trying to seal. Andy Sullivan was going to pounce on that free ball. It gets deflected out towards Alana Cook. But she is wise to it and beats her player there. And the deflection really kills the pace off of that one. Makes it an easy ball for Foams to get on. Dorson moving it right. Klein Harder. Germany will try to break out. Here they come into the middle. Pop slides it left. Wow. Peel. Cutting towards the middle. Dropping it off. Alexandra Pop from distance. Blocked. That was off Morgan. Sullivan moving it ahead. To the left. Smith, Morgan, Pugh, Lavelle are all forward. Smith outside the box, setting it in well wide of Frooms. <laughs> I mean, uh, is this pace going to continue from both these sides? Incredibly open, just end to end. Sophia Smith is sizing up her defender, drives in the 18, cuts across that front foot. But now she's falling away from it. Can't pick out the run of Pew inside the box. How good has Smith been this year? NWSL MVP, championship game MVP, and still just a 22-year-old. Yeah, certainly has grown into the role um, for club and country because a different role with the Portland Thorns is a central striker more often than not employed and here playing in the wide channels. Feed from Morgan. Offside flag is up on the U.S. But I think that just shows her versatility, and it also creates comfort for her because the front three are allowed to place change along that front line, and so she can pop up in any one of those gaps and understand what is being asked of her and what to expect from the defensive side of things, whether that's a player getting tied to her, dropping off, that she can run at. She's been exposed to a lot this year and really taken in stride. One goal in her first 13 international games, 10 in her last 12. So after a slow start scoring-wise, she's in a groove.
Held up there by Latvine. Nuskin. 24 in green for Germany. Straight up the middle. Moving it ahead. Germany did well to receive that ball. Dispossessed in a bad spot. Lavelle keeps it rolling. And the flag is up on the U.S. Well, here's a look at, at the threatened runs in behind. Alex Morgan looks to be on side. Certainly, Mallory Pugh is. Sophia Smith is. So I think the ref gets it wrong in real time. Alex but I do Morgan. think the U.S. has to be concerned with the fact that their center back easily glided through the lines, just carrying the ball out. U.S. pressing, winning the ball. Pugh has helped. Trying to play it across, it's deflected. That took too long. She's got Morgan to go herself open. there. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. But Morgan was open. If you're going to make that pass, it's got to be quicker. Latvian drops it back. Germany was fortunate there when they lost that ball. So Mal Pugh. Yeah, and just think back to the England match. The U.S. was able to pick up possession in a very similar situation, just stepping to that initial ball out. Pugh picks her pocket, and as you said, I think she gets the angle wrong on the ball into Alex Morgan. She doesn't have to play her into space. Does well to win it initially, and I think she can have a go. The goal is wide open. Fromes is out of position, but she waits that extra touch. Now both options really close down on her. She was unselfish looking for Morgan, but it cost her a scoring opportunity. Now Pugh's had a terrific year for club and country. And now you don't put her name in pencil in the starting 11. It's an ink. I'd argue Sharpie. There you go. Throwing for Sofia Puerta. The U.S. has had to use so many right backs and left backs, not to mention center backs this year, with all the injuries that they've had. A lot of those injuries were so long ago that sometimes we forget about them, but they were there. I think we're reminded quite frequently about them and the depth to for the United States. Yeah, now, yeah. Drum up. Dropping it back. Available subs tonight. The experienced Megan Rapino and Crystal Dunn. We see Journey Rodman as well. Part of the youth movement of this team. Goalkeeper out. Well, the flag was up anyway. Offside on the U.S. on Morgan. This one, I think they do deem right. Alex Morgan just leaning at the time of the release of the pass. But it's a good look from Lindsey Rand. And even though it's offside and they don't get the benefit of the call, the reality is that is going to leave an imprint in that back line's mind. And they're going to start to drop off a bit more. And that's going to provide more space in midfield for Horan and Lavelle specifically to operate in. U.S. Miss Morgan with those two games in Europe dealing with a knee injury. Tonight it's her 199th cap. Assuming she plays on Sunday, she'll get number 200 at Red Bull Arena against the same Germany side. Rao on the left. Down the wing. Germany looking. Flag on. Holds. Waits for the help. It's coming. Magul, always available it seems. Give him go! In front, well, stopped by Murphy, but the flag was up before it. Close call. Absolutely a close call, and I think one of the, the things the United States has to be wary of is they are man-marking a bit, and so Alana Cook steps into midfield. That's why she is vacated out of that space. Now you're having Andy Sullivan defend an open space against Frygong. Initially slows her down. That does a well, a well enough job to allow numbers to recover behind it, but then a quick one-two created that next opportunity. Back to live action. It's Casey Murphy on the ball. 
making her ninth start. And based on the numbers, she's played now in nine, Nair in seven. Seems like there's a question mark in goal for the USA. When's the last time we've been able to say that? It feels like it's been that way, though, right? For for a couple months where, yeah. listen, Nair was the one, but it, it was a one with a question mark behind it. And I think the NWSL performance that knocked Chicago out of the playoffs, you know, highlighted some of some of the issues that the U.S. has in that. Ooh, well playing it in. That net was open. U.S. is giving up a lot of room here. Last few times up the field for Germany, and it's. Well, it's pop out of midfield. She steps in, wins the heavy touch from Sofia Huerta. Now she continues her movement in behind. She's onside because Germa had absorbed the space. And Murphy reads it well, comes off her line. Just put enough pressure on pop to make her glance that wide of the net. Hard to see how that challenge or who took the brunt of that. Well, pop would make a claim that it's her. Still down. <laughs> Six goals in five games at the Euros. Injured in the warm-up. She was listed in the starting 11. And then when TV came back from the commercial break, she wasn't there. That's right. So, Ali, we talked about this U.S. team. A question in goal based on the minutes, right? Because Murphy and Nair have split the time. Where are the other question marks for this U.S. team going into this next World Cup? I think it's fair to say that the center back position is not totally solidified at this point. I think there's a case to be made for this Germa Cook partnership to be that come World Cup time. I think at the sixth position, you're still, you know, asking questions. Is it Andy Sullivan? Is it a lone six? Do does the United States play in a double pivot? Do they shift their system a bit? Do they have some flexibility in that regard? I think when you look at that front line right now, it is pretty much set in stone. Unless, of course, Kat Macario gets back healthy fit and can challenge for one of those three spots. But I think this is the starting front three. I think Haran and Lavelle, they've, they've really been the, the two that the Blanco has looked to to be those eights, tens, however you want to frame them. I think outside back position it is still one that is up for debate. If Dunn can yeah. get back fully fit, does she take a spot? Does Fox have the ability to flip to that right-hand side? Because Huerta is not naturally a fullback. And you've seen early on here, there have been some bad decisions out of the back on that right-hand side. Yeah. And you can't forget Kelly O'Hara as well, out injured. Emily Sonnet's injured. Tierna Davidson's injured. The list goes on and on. And look what's happening in the Men's World Cup, right? I mean, injuries a plenty coming at the 11th hour. Yeah, nobody wants to play this weekend, I can tell you that. On the right side, Smith with a step behind, playing it back again unselfishly, giving up a scoring chance. Horan collects it. Left side, end line, playing it across. Thought that entire ball was out. Maybe it was. Good hustle by Horan. And it just shows you how explosive the United States can be in the offensive side of things. Sophia Smith is a few steps ahead when this ball is released by Alex Morgan. And even that ball across, the lack of productivity in the final third, the lack of, of clean touches, clean decisions, you know, that was an issue for Vlaco and this team in the European Tour, and I think we're still seeing some of that. They wanted to combine better in the attacking third look more like a team like they had all year. They started the year with a draw against the Czech Republic, then they won 13 straight games, and then back-to-back -back losses. Germa. And that ball goes out of play. 24th minute, zeros on the board. Both teams have had looks in this opening half. and Mewis among the available subs tonight, loosening up a bit. There'll be some changes made in this game. We might see a different lineup on Sunday. They're watching certain players' minutes. Some bumps and bruises from the NWSL season carried by some players, so a lot of things to worry about. And Lavelle will be worried about that late hit.
just good feet from Roosevelt. Oof, get a step on the defender. And number eight, Doral not having any part of that. Oh. I hate seeing that. Yeah. Well, shaking it off. USA and Germany. USA ranked number one by FIFA. Germany is number three. Only two nations that have won multiple Women's World Cups. The Germans have won it twice. Last time, 2007, they won it back to back. 03 and 07. USA won the last two. Looking for a three-peat, which would be incredible. Just thinking about it. Going for round. Soft touch there to Magul. Under pressure. Nuskin. Back to goal. Frums. Frums plays for Wolfsburg. One of nine players on this team from Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg more famous on the women's side than they are on the men's side. Except you've got De Bruyne coming out of Wolfsburg. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Hard but he's not there anymore. That. Hey, he's not uh, there anymore. Yeah. He's the pride of Man City. And Belgium. I was going to say that. Yeah. To beat me too. Coming up soon. You ready? In Qatar. Yeah, you? No. Oh. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I, can, I can tell by the pause. Yeah. <laughs> Worked up. Dropping it back, Sullivan from the Washington Spirit for Gurma. Moved up the middle by Smith. Offside flag is up again. Might have been for a foul, if not for an offside. States can take out of this as they are creating opportunities to get in behind. Germany's holding that high line. And in fact, Pew is absolutely on side. I think us near side number 17, Rao kept her on side, but regardless, you know, it's good movement from Sophia Smith. She pops off that back line. She's able to take that first touch, and the next one is the ball that's in behind the opposite. And, and just between Lindsay Horan in particular, she is clearing the space for other players to get on the ball with this man marking that, that Germany tends to do in the interior. Ooh, Nuskin gives it away. Here's the U.S. with LaBelle. Leading it. Smith over the bar. Germany's been shaky in their build out. It's just a really bad ball out by Nuskin. Pew takes a couple touches to clean it up and then finds a free player in Rose Lavelle waiting for that run to come. The overlap from Sophia Smith, but just falling away from this. Can't get it driven on the ground across the frame of goal. The technique's wrong, and I think Sophia Smith, left hand side, cutting in our right, is a more dangerous weapon than if she's falling away on this right hand side to that ball. Wonderful ball, though, delivered by Rose Lavelle. Yes, absolutely. Nuskin plays for Eintracht Frankfurt. Four of her teammates also on this national team. So five from Eintracht, five from Bayern Munich, and we mentioned the nine from Wolfsburg. Second ball is picked by the U.S. Look out! Trying to get herself free. Look at this. Ravel holding, dropping it back. Fox to the right. Smith, overlap coming. Plays it in front. They rushed it. Looked like things were developing now. Yeah, but if the more touches you take, you can see the recovery runs of this German side. They get back, they get organized. Sophia Smith just trying to pull wide, give herself enough time to get across off if that pressure doesn't arrive. It's not the right angle in the end. It's a good idea. It really is. Yeah. It just doesn't get enough action on that ball to cut it back into the path of Mallory Pugh in the far post. 30th minute. Zeros to the board. No 
Paul Magul playing a quick that. I'm not sure if that ball was completely stopped, and now the referee is going to bring it back. The ball looked like it was still rolling when the free kick was taken. So it'll be a retake. Dorsett to the right. Germany in green. That's taken away. We never showed you earlier, but Pop did come back out on the field after her injury. Here's the U.S. Horan. Blocked. One by Dorsen. Germany have won their last three, including a friendly win over France, following their loss in the Euros to England. Germa to the side towards Cook. Went on. Down the right. Teammate of Cook said to Lorraine, and now the assistant referee helps out with that call. It's one of the first times we've seen Sofia where to get up on this right hand side. It's a good ball played to her from Alana Cook, and then that challenge comes in by number 17, Rao. And this is a dangerous spot for the United States because Germany, yes, they're good at with that first ball playing, trying to get it out of the 18 and making a play on it, but the second days they've struggled with, and I think that's something the United States can take advantage of. Free kick, Mallory Pugh. Two in the wall for Germany. About 24 yards from goal at an angle. Curling ball in. Headed out by Germany. Second ball. U.S. will claim it. Germa moving it left. Driven into the box. Headed down. That's deflected out. Germany recovers. Give it right back to Huerta. And then Pew back for Germa. NWSL best 11 player from 2022, eight on this roster, made NWSL's best 11. Cook pushing forward. Sideline for Pew, worked up. Cook. How good was that by Lavelle, though? Sweet. She makes a few of those moves each game. Huerta. Lavelle. Tenor for Pew, that's blocked. Clipped forward by Raya. And then nodded forward. Germany will get to it. Latvine's pass. Picked. U.S. on the ball. Far side. Haran outside the circle, now inside. Moving it. Lovell, 16 in white. Huerta, free to cross. Delivers, header. It was there for Lindsey Horan. It certainly was. Oh, when you see that movement out of midfield, you see the time and space that Huerta has in this right channel. And you're thinking this is going to be picked out of the back of the net by Germany. Just well done by Rose Lovell to hold that long enough for the advancement of Huerta, and then the string run of Haran. She said she wants to get in the 18-yard box. She's doing it in club, and she wants to do more of it for country. Well, here comes the run, and just too much action on that, trying to get into this near post instead of heading it back where it came from, but really good run from her. Just didn't have that finish touch, yeah. Huerta's so good at making those deliveries from the right flank, Sullivan. And Especially Germany's not going to get out to pressure her. I mean, she's going to pick out runners in the box all day long. She does that so well with her club team at O.L. Reign. Trying to do the same on the national stage. A lot of Cook settles. 
drives it long. Bumped out by Haran. Heavy touch. LaBelle kept it in. What a move there. LaBelle catching up. Foot save. And in a second one is a U.S. goal. Or not. Looked like it had crossed the line. On a quick look. How did that stay out? And again, Lavelle, the creator. I got to see this myself. I know, pure art. I mean, just draws in the defender, sizes her up, nutmegs her, tries to glide that one across Ooh. the frame of goal, and the deflection goes to Lindsay Aran. And she's just trying to get depth inside the 18-yard box. Little deflection, and that bounces off the goal line. Does not look like it's the whole ball. Nope. We don't have goal line technology confirmed one way or another, but certainly looks like that one does stay out. And Froome says, thank you very much. So it remains deadlocked. Zeroes on the board, 36th minute. Both teams having chances. Lately, though, it's been the U.S. for the offensive opportunities, not Germany. Germany had the better start, but lately, the U.S. has done much better. Ball deflects out. It's a USA throw-in. They'll take it from the far side. This is Dry Pink Stadium, the home to Inter Miami. All kinds of rumors about Lionel Messi maybe playing there. Rumors at the moment. Played long, deflected back. Germany controlling at the moment. Dorsen, that touch blocked by Goma. Outlet pass to the left. Morgan in his space. Flag stays down. U.S. on the attack. Chance saved by Broom. Terrific save as Pugh was breaking in and Smith was there to help if needed. Incredible save by Fromm, and good outlet ball by Alex Morgan to find Mallory Pugh as the lone striker above it. She runs that channel and now just uses the momentum of the defender to her advantage, cuts across her. And you're thinking that one is going to end up in the back of the net, but incredible save by Fromm. Just quick reactions. She's now Germany's number one goalkeeper. Did well in the Euros. Pugh's corner. Brought down awkwardly, it's loose, cleared away. U.S. on that recovery. Rose LaBelle drives it back off the left foot, into the box. It's loose. I thought there was a foul there. Germany have the player down. But that's the second time the U.S. has gotten a good opportunity off of the second phase of these set pieces. The ball in by Roosevelt is a good one. It just putting it in the mixer to cause some problems. And Alex Morgan just holds back and is patient in her positioning and gets that gift. They can't convert. Great crowd on hand. Try pink stadium. There's Germany on the move. Oh, hard challenge. From Haran. The girl's gonna feel that for a bit. For a week. <laughs> it's good tracking by Lindsay Rand because Magoo's trying to shift out of the pressure. And Haran's having none of it. Goes to ground right here and ends the play. Well timed to have the challenge. Throwing from right in front of the US bench. You can hear that bench. The ball goes out again. This time a USA throw from Morgan. Cook. Germa. Touched back by Horan. US on the ball. Two-game losing streak, but 71 games unbeaten on home soil. Germa. Their last loss at home was back in 2017 against Australia. Down that left wing side. U.S. breaking. Attempted cross. Ooh, is that kept in? 
Should be a corner, would have thought. And that, I believe, is going to be the call. Fortieth minute. Germany really game. zones. Yeah, they really zone on these corner kicks. I think the United States can get inside with Lindsay Horan, her ability in the air. She's going to be one of the targets. The U.S. is ready. Delivered by Q. Back post area. And it missed a couple of targets. Yeah, and if they're going to crowd up the six-yard box, you think you want to put this right in on the goalie. This one is overcooked. No pun intended. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> 41st minute. Scoreless between the USA and Germany. A rivalry that goes back to the late 80s when Germany was, at that time, playing as West Germany. It was a West Germany and an East Germany at the time. Up this right side, here is Germany. Last title they won, 2016 Olympics, a six-year drought. That's a long time for them, not winning a title. And it's a young, exciting German group. Not, not all of the players that were in that starting lineup in the Euros are here, let alone starting. So it tells you the, about the depth that, that Martina von Stecklenburg has at her disposal. Yeah, they are missing some injured players, four or five. This is ball has played long. Davids is long, Gwyn is another, there are others. Schuler's not here. Yeah, she was a late scratch. Moran. Interesting first half. Zeros on the board. Both teams with chances. On that left side, here's the U.S. Three on the attack. A foul or not? Yes. Right outside the box. It has to be. Again, Alex Morgan popping off that back line, being a link-up player to release some of these wingers. In this case, it's Mallory Pugh. Both wingers and Sophia Smith, Mallory Pugh doing so well just to cut across that front challenging leg of the defender. And then it's the recovery run of Klein Air that bumbles into Mallory Pugh in a very, very precarious position if you're a German fan. And a tantalizing one for Lindsay Aran, who's over it. Late stages, first half. Moran is 19 to 20 yards away. It's like six in the wall, maybe now a seventh for Germany. Pop coming over. On the whistle, Moran is ready to strike. Moran with a shot and hit off the wall. Moran on the recovery. Dribble look like she was fouled, and if that was a foul, it's inside the box. <laughs> How was that not a foul? <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, there's no VAR. No, and Pop but I think just, Lindsay's right. Yeah, yeah, just leaves a lingering leg out. Pop says and no. You've seen this. You've seen this all half long. Yeah. These German defenders are diving in defensively, and the United States is using that momentum to their advantage. This time a foul going against the Germans. Moran <laughs> still having words with the ref. Casey Murphy going short. The right side, Puerta. Sophia getting it back on the right, dropping it back. Naomi Germa. Down the wing, left side, box. U.S. calling for it upfield. Pew is up, that's blocked. Cleared by Germany.
almost at 45 here. Magul drops it back. Played up by Buell. Getting the return. Now it's going to go out. Fox touching it last. Waiting for the official signal on stoppage time. It's going to be a minute. Throwing for Germany. And it's a late whistle on the foul. Big free kick coming up here now for Germany after this foul. And you got to mark up Alexandra Pop. You've got to get multiple players on her. Because even with pressure draped on her, she can still find the back of the net. She basically scores a goal for every two games played. Not quite, but pretty close. Look at your math skills. Yeah. It's not exact, but pretty close. Pop is number 11 for Germany. She's making her move. Played short off the training ground of Magoo. And fortunately for the U.S., she was off target because it looked like that was a surprise. And that might be the last kick, Ali, of this half. Yeah, and it's a good look for McGrew. Not enough pressure on there, but she skims it off of her other foot. And I think for the U.S., good first half for them, despite that first opening five minutes or so. Yeah, it's wide open here from Fort Lauderdale. Getting ready for the second half. There is one substitution made. Looks like Krumbigel, number 27, has come in. And we'll see who has come out. That's the only change, though. That we can see for Germany. Underway, second half, USA in white, Germany in green. Ali, what does the US need to do better or different this half? I think final third decision making. I mean, we also saw execution and also fell short at times. I think, you know, they, they really snuffed out a lot of what Germany was trying to do. I think the press worked well. I think they they thwarted a lot of the weapons that Germany has, especially with Pop in the midfield. I mean, her ability to pick a pass and open the field up started to wane as that half wore on, and they were able to pressure her and make her no and void to a certain extent. Lavelle for Morgan! And it's taken away by Dorsen. Cleared up to Pop. Pop receiving a tough ball there, but has poise, knows what to do. Krumbigel is the one sub for Germany, replacing Rail number eight. And they're getting younger legs on the pitch with, with Krumbigel in there, but here's the moment again. Rose Lavelle, just a spark plug on that right hand side, trying to lay that early ball in, but behind that doesn't come off. But she's been a lot of, of the reason the United States has found themselves in good positions in the final third. That was Fox in a collision. She's still down. Latvine commits the foul. Fox recently back from injury. And her heavy touch invites that challenge from Latvine. Crunchy can tackle. Usually you think of Oberf being provider of that for Germany. Fox is okay. Played the last two years of racing Louisville in the NWSL and has earned her way to regular appearances on this U.S. national team. Fox 23 on the ball. She was wearing number 19, but that's Crystal Dunn's number, and Crystal is available on the subs bench tonight. Ball out of play, throw in here for Germany. What can Germany do better here in the second half? You know, they have to pick their moment of whether they're going to play out of that press of the United States or whether they're going to bypass it because, again, you've got talented players in your front three and they're just getting limited touches. Klein Harder. 
if I am Voss Tecklenburg, I'm putting Pop up top and utilizing her as an outlet player. She can spring players into life, but I just think she's had limited influence on the game from this deeper position. Kumbigo's pass blocked. Lavelle, nice touch again. Horan. Cutting ball from Lindsay. Let go for Pugh. Pugh trying to find Morgan. It'll be a U.S. corner. Well, here's a good look at the challenge of the, the newly inserted Kronberg in the game right in the back of Fox. Fox has no idea that she's about to be crunched to the ground. The ref doesn't call it. Third U.S. corner. Mallory Pugh on it. Should drive it towards the middle. Head it to the Almost got through, but it's cleared away by Germany in the end. Picked back up. Flygon. Push back. Gurma collects. Cook on the right. Ball is played long in the left. Hugh trying to bring it down. Smashed out of play by Germany. And they have a player down. It is Klein Harnup. Well, Sullivan had a couple of options there. Haran was asking for it between the lines in midfield. She opts to play Pew and get her going 1v1. Can't bring that under a spell. And you see that foul that ensues. Not called, though. Alana Cook will go all the way back to Casey Murphy. Long ball for Murphy headed forward. Germany back on it to the feet of Frums. Germany on the ball. Here they come. They have qualified for all previous Women's World Cups, and they're in the next one as well. Turned over to Sullivan. U.S. on it. On the move. Smith trying to play it across. It's going to be knocked down for a U.S. corner. Fifty first minute. Zeros on the board. Fourth U.S. corner. Pugh will take another. Eleven goals, six assists, career year for her with Chicago Red Stars. Putting it up for grabs. Hand off the post. Picked up by Cook, driven across the way. Had it once, then twice. Germany in the breakout. But it's 1v2 at the moment. Three more Germany attackers on the move. Joining the group. Buell pushing it forward. Kumbigo is in. Saved by Murphy. Buell again. Shooting. At the post and in. Germany has scored. one nothing for Germany. A spectacular Murphy save. Nothing to do with that last one. And just end to end stuff for both these sides. United States had such a good opportunity here with Lindsay Aran. She's on her bike. That one pings off the post. Fortune not favoring her. And the reservice ends up being the counterattack moment for Germany. Sofia Huerta pounces on that, but it ends up at the feet of the Germans. And they're now surging going from the other direction. This is really well constructed counterattack because you bite those two defenders into the near side and then you release the far. Murphy does so well to get down to the ground, parry that one out of danger, we think. But this shot is something special, just curling in towards that back post. Murphy laying herself out for it, trying to cover up and make a touch on that, but unfortunate to get the deflection as she goes to ground. What a moment for, for the United States and this German team to come back to the other end and Buell to come up with that go-ahead goal.
Pinging it off the far post and just unfortunate for Murphy. And she wants her team to get going because they've been on the front foot. They've been the team that's looked more likely to score. It is her 15th international goal in this, her 31st appearance. And it gives Germany the lead. But this has been an open game. It was open in the first half alley. It's not changed at all here in the second. Now it's going to be even more open as the U.S. tries to come back in this. There's a bit of a delay here. We're hearing that they may credit that as an own goal. And not to Buell. Either way, Germany is up. Great effort from Buell, whether she gets credit for it or not. Fox will move it to the middle. Murphy. And as open as the game has been, as you said, JP, I still think the United States has looked like the more dangerous team, the, the team that's more likely to score. And unfortunate to find themselves down one nothing. Called an own goal off Murphy. Ball is played to the right from Beagle. She factored in that last goal as well. So it's the U.S. trailing. We mentioned numbers that we've not mentioned before. Two-game losing streak. Multiple goals given up in each of the last two games after their pretty clean record in terms of goals conceded. It's not multiple goals here, but... Right now, U.S. needs one to draw a level. Sophia Smith over the shoulder looking for help. Took the shot, and it's wide. But why not? Give it a go. <laughs> she didn't need the help. Just using that res a decoy, draw the attention of the defenders. As she's driving towards the 18-yard box, you can see a player down row for Germany on the bottom of your screen. And that one just failing away, fading away from goal. One of the things you note on that German goal is with Crumb Beagle putting that on frame and testing Murphy. That ball stays in play. The deflection then becomes the opportunity for Germany that they put away. The United States has put a lot of their shots off target and hasn't had the opportunity to get that rebound, to get that next action. And that's going to be something I'm sure that, that the United States will take a look at after this match. You've got to test the goalkeeper. You've got to make them come up with a play. You've got to take those chances and hope that the next action if that initial one isn't fruitful, the next one is. Last time Germany had an own goal against the USA, 1999 Women's World Cup quarterfinal. Uh, one of the stars of that tournament, Brandy Chastain, who, as I remember, later scored in that particular game. That's right, I remember that. Go USA! There have been some good battles over the years between these two, even though the US does have a pretty good lead in the Lifetime Series. It's interesting that, you know, the evolution of the women's game, this German team used to be very structured and rigid, rigid in their 4-4-2. You could play between the lines. Not exactly the case in this form of Germany under Voss Tecklenburg. Yeah, the great Birgit Prince, among others. Here is Pugh with a free kick, knotted down. And out. The USA throw in for Pew. Now she's going to give it up to Fox. Morgan, a flick off the chest. Andy Sullivan collecting, dropping it back. A lot of cook to the right for Puerta. Smith, Pew, turning. Sullivan keeps it rolling. Emily Fox behind Morgan. From Beagle knocked it out. U.S. trying to keep the pressure on. Get something here. Fox and line earns a corner. Taking all of the set pieces tonight. 
She'll take another. It's getting closer to the hour mark. Hugh delivers. Horan. And it's wide. Horan says it was deflected. And this time, the call does go Lindsay's way. It's a corner. And the U.S. continues to load up that six-yard box, or at least it's one of the looks that they're showing Germany on these set pieces. Remember back in the Euro final when England did that, that was their game winner. They just put traffic in front of Froms, and Germany was unable to clear it. England capitalized. Pew from the opposite corner. And the outswinger, Horan, brought it down. The U.S. collects. Cook puts it back across, headed once. Morgan, it's loose. Smith's shot blocked. Horan was sitting up there in front of goal, hoping for a rebound. Gerba pushing it wide. Sustained pressure, though, here from the U.S. Fox, good move from Beagle. A little bit more than shoulder to shoulder, or so it appeared. Sixtieth minute, Germany leading. It's a throw in, no foul. Smith try to square it. Break down over the ball. Tonight's telecast sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. Here's Germany out of their own box. Unbeaten streak at home in jeopardy. Since 2017, they've not lost at home. So many streaks on the line tonight, but they don't really pay attention to numbers, as they said yesterday. They're trying to just win every game. It's a different landscape in women's yeah. football, right? And the yeah. quality of competition. We're talking England, Spain. Those are the two losses. Now you're facing Germany, uh, another top team in the world. So, of course, records are going to be at risk when you're lining yeah. up this type of competition. Well, this is what you want. Yep. No disrespect to CONCACAF, but U.S. wants to play against European teams as much as they possibly can to better prepare for the next World Cup. Under pressure, ball comes back towards goal. Frooms is there. Taylor Cornet among the sub. You'll see Crystal Dunn there too. As the ball is played forward. Back four. Wow. Cross. Left line, left it. Maduro almost got into trouble. Now it's cleared finally by the German side. Buell left it. Left line. Dorsen. Three subs ready to come in for the U.S. The one that I didn't see was Sam Coffey. She was in the middle there. And so. it looks like three for Germany as well. Get all of these subs for you as quickly and as best we can. But Pop is out and Hoggle is in. That's going to be one of the changes for the Germans. Latvine out, Uberdorf in, as we see the U.S. making changes too. Crystal Dunn making it, making her way in. 
We'll get these sorted out for you. Should be three changes, though, for each. And then Feldkamp in for Nuskin. So I wondered, Ali, how long these teams were going to go to see if these players could sort it out. They are looking at other things. They've got a game in four days as well. And some players are coming in not at 100%. Yeah, and managing minutes. I mean, these look like plan subs. You know, you're hitting that 60-minute mark. That's when these players are up on the touchline. I think it's a big moment for Sam Coffey. You know, I, we talked about what positions are potentially still up for grabs, and I think that sixth role, you know, she can imprint on this game and control things and look at ease against this quality of competition. I think that's going to be a statement. Foul there on the Germans. Fourth minute, Germany leads on an own goal. Buell had a lot to do with it, but the shot went off the post and off the goalkeeper Casey Murphy and in. Unfortunate for Murphy as Hugh is ready for the free kick. It falls in the box, and that might have been handled by the U.S. So they brought in Coffee, Dunn, and Korniak. And a good target in the air with Taylor Korniak. If the United States can get in some of these advanced positions and draw fouls, she's going to be one of those key players that the U.S. is going to look to target. Here's Germany over the halfway line. A one to nothing lead. Flygon was after it. Quick throw in for Germany. Looking for that second. Oh, calling for it there. It goes out. Kumbigel. And that one's blocked. Germany will go all the way back to Frooms. Germany with this lead. Trying to close it out. Long way to go, though. Only in the 66th minute. Sophia Smith sees the cover coming in the inside channel, so she just beats her defender around the outside. But then it's that final pass selection. Alex Morgan betting on that ball going to the near post. She doesn't make that run. Sophia Smith plays that too close to goal. And it's just that lack of production in the final third that the United States is suffering from. Decision making and execution. You know, I think it's interesting when you look at this front three and how dynamic they are individually and how they can eliminate defenders. What if that also makes you stop if you're one of your the, her teammates? Because you're not exactly sure where she's going to go. Is she going to go to the outside? Is she going to come to the inside? What does my movement look like off of that action? And so you almost are more reactionary than, than proactive in those movements. And I think that is also part of what the United States is suffering from as they near that 18-yard box. Belt come. Dorson up the middle. Frygon turning, finding Magul. Germany with five in the attack here. Magul setting one up there. Cleared the right to Chicago, who sent it over. High and wide on her first good touch. And it's well done by Germany. They go in to go out. It's number 10, Freigong, that releases that pass to Magul. And now she's got 
the depth in the box at the backyard, excuse me, the back post. Dunn reads it, but it's a poor clearance and actually puts his right back into the path of German Hoggle. But the quick reaction doesn't allow her to make a clean strike on it. Fifth international appearance. That's all for Hoggle. Here's Frooms in her 36th appearance for Germany. Playing at the Feldkamp. Zara Dorsen. The middle. Hoggle to the left. 69th minute. Germany won. USA no score. The US looks a bit tired. That pressure not is imposing up higher on the field. And now with Oberdorf in there, you know, the relationship between her and Magul is strong in that build out, and that's a different proposition for the United States to really defend this initial phase of the attack. Here's Magul. Leading in, Freigog. Pushing it ahead. Maybe a chance here for Beagle across. Off work done. Second ball. Jody gets to it. It's deflected wide. Dunn is after it. Kept it in play. Dunn who played on the Portland Thorns championship side. Trying to play it back. Klein Horner. Huberdorf. That looked like a good ball, actually. To Krumbeagle. It, it did, and you're seeing the influence already. There's McGill. McGill sitting in the higher seam. She releases again. It's number 10 in Frygong. It has caused some problems against our center backs. And then the cross comes in from Kumbigo. Another poor clearance to the United States. Megan Rapino is up. You can tell by the fan reaction that somebody popular was getting ready to come in. So it's Korniak, Coffey, and Dunn. We're going to see Germany make a change, too. It was Lavelle who came out, Fox and Sullivan. And now it's Klein Harna who will leave. Looks like Nicole Anyomi will come in. Anyomi started the last game against France. Yeah, Fifth initially of six. Coming, coming into this match, I was thinking that Anyomi would be a player the United States could look to take advantage of on the defensive side of things. Fifth of six subs that they're allowed in this international friendly. So you got about 20 minutes and stoppage time to go as the U.S. looks for an equalizing goal and to not lose three straight for the first time since, again, 1993. To 30 yards away. Two on the wall for Germany. It is Pugh curling it. Headed out. Man, it's going to be a corner. It's a well shaped free kick by Mallory Pugh because you're just trying to drive this one towards the goal mouth, and any player flicks that on. Makes it a really difficult save for Frohms, but that one cleared out. Saw Trinity Rodman up as well. We'll see if she's going to come in as well with Rapino. Right now, it looks like a double switch. Pew is ready. 72nd minute. Up for grabs in the middle. Frohms came out. Didn't get it. But the ball was over the bar anyway. Cornette was after it. Change is happening now. Rapino in. Sophia Smith and Mal Pugh. Let's see. Looks like they're both coming out. And Rodman and in too. Yeah, and very different profile of players with Rodman coming in and Rapino. Rapino wants the ball at her feet more so. Trinity Rodman can stretch the opposition. Both, though, incredibly bright inside the 18-yard box. I mean, you can make Rapino any one of those looks earlier, and this game could be tied 1-1.
But we know who's going to take the free kicks now. With Rapino in, here's Quimbigle on the right. Play it across, head in, tip, double the bar by Murphy, robbing Frygong. U.S. is still in it, thanks to Murphy. Yeah, it's a good save from her. Here comes Germany. They release this near side. Again, there's space for Krumbigel, and she bobs to play the early ball, trying to bend that one in behind the back line, picks out her target in Frygong. It's an excellent service right on the money. Frygong connects well with it. Casey Murphy slides across, gets set, and then tips that one over. Good save by her. 74th minute. Rao will take this corner. Felisa Tesrao from Wolfsburg. Five games she played in, in the Euros. Into the middle. It's coming out. And Yomi got a touch. Gets the rest. That's blocked. Huerta was there. And Yomi pushing it back. Rubidor's pass. And then Hagel again is off target. Rubidov's a player to watch, the young player of the Euro 2022 tournament. Yeah, and I remember back in the 2019 World Cup when she was just getting, just getting those garbage minutes towards the end of matches, and what a player she has turned into. One yeah, of the best sixes seven, in the world right now. She was 17 on that roster. Wow. Age 17. Kirk Beagle's pass, and Yomi. Picked up, shot was blocked, it was Buell's shot. She'll get a corner in the 75th minute. Germany giving the USA a great battle here tonight. Same two teams. Sunday at Red Bull Arena, what could be another sellout. And that'll do it for this calendar year for the U.S. women's national team. And then all of the focus on Qatar very soon. Can the U.S. advance from a difficult group? Fox will have all the games for you. Ten days from now, from the corner, to the middle, headed straight out. Second ball won though by Uberdorf. Collects it. Sends it right back in. Headed away, but not far out. Collision there. Rotman picks it up. Dribbles left. Got by and Yomi, but help is coming. Kumbigel goes back to goal. Good time for the energy of Rodman and Rapino as well to come in this late. Yeah, Especially Rapino on the free energy. kicks. Yeah, spot on, JP. Up Morgan. Rodman is a special player. It's figuring out where she fits in and how do you get in minutes with all the talent that plays in the attacking positions that the U.S. has. Right, that's Blatko's job to figure that out. Not easy. You know, it is the possibility of, of her being a nine, an option, provide a different look to the front line. Ori has employed Sophia Smith there in Alex Morgan's absence. You know, that opens up a wing position for Rodman. 77th minute. Germany with a one to nothing lead over the U.S. Both teams have had a decent amount of looks here. Really, in each half. Flag on. Magoo. Fragon has had a good game for Germany. Not an easy task to hold the ball up against those center backs. Hoggle's pass to the left. Wow. Hoggle! That time it looked like it was on frame. I think she's asking about a deflection. 
And you look at the players that Voss Tecklenburg has brought in, and they've had an impact on the game. Krumbigo being one of them, and since the insertion of Hoggle, she's been bright as well. She plays that ball out wide, and then just continues her run into that open scene as the United States has to drop back and absorb where this ball is, get their line set inside the 18-yard box. The depth isn't there from the United States to pick up that player in Hoggle, who continued to run. And on her favorite left foot, that one isn't missing by much. I know we're all thinking about Qatar, but in just a few months after that, it's the Women's World Cup, and these will be two of the favorites to win it. The U.S. will be looking for an unprecedented three in a row. On the turnover, it's Haran. Knocked down by Oberdorf. <laughs> I mean, that is a staple in Oberdorf's game. Yeah, at age 20, to be an anchor like that. Krumbigel into the middle. Magul, Krumbigel has Agnomi behind her. Krumbigel going forward, deflected away as Crystal Dunn on it. Moving into the left, Trinity Rotman going forward, picked off there in the circle. Oberdorf. Floats one back up, blocked, collected by the U.S. Derma. Puerta to the right, Rapino. Crystal Dawn. With Rodman trying to combine, that's blocked by Anyomi. They collide, ball is loose. Rodman fights for it. Overtaken, that's Uberdorf again. She's very confident in the tackle, that's for sure. No hesitation. Fearless. I mean, she's stopping attacks one way or another. It's going to be winning the ball and sending her team the opposite direction, or it's by drawing a foul. And Horan is going to be coming out for Sanchez. And Brand is going to be coming into the game for Germany. Brand has pace. It's going to be another threat. Ball played forward. And now it's going to roll. Out. That should be it for Germany's subs. So we'll see if the fresh legs can help the U.S. You've got some teammates out there. Coffee and Dunn with Portland. Rodman Sanchez with Washington. And I do think that bringing fresh legs in the midfield is important for the United States as Germany started to really take a hold of this second half once Oberdorf made her way into the center of the park. Hugh LeBron, who has just come in, is from Wolfsburg. She's only 20 years of age, part of that German youth. Hagel overtaken. Sanchez lays it off. There. Good work by Sanchez to help in the end draw a foul. Yeah, she wins it. It's quick transition. Perhaps not the right ball by Korniak into Alex Morgan as she had pressure on three sides of her. But she does well just to hold it up enough and draw that foul. 82nd minute. Germany leads one to nothing and an own goal scored in the 52nd minute. Megan Rapino expected to take all of these important kicks. Three Olympics, three World Cups on her resume. About 24 yards from goal. And looks like Coffee is going to just try to pick the runner for Taylor Korniak to get free. Rapino with the strike. It's headed away. Corner, U.S. 
just rifles this one to the danger zone. Oberdorf heads that one clear, takes it for the team. Corner from Rapino. Went short this time. Into the box. Headed away. Brought down by Coffey. Played back. Rodman. That's blocked. U.S. keeps it. Rapino in. It's blocked there. Hago clears. Dunn is after it. 84th minute. Dermot to the right with that pass. Hoggle. That's blocked. Throw it back to goal to Frooms. Missing and Yomi with that pass. And Krumi go with that. But it was deflected out. It'd be a Germany throw. Brown's number up before. Now it's actually official. And it's Buell who's coming out. Trinity Rodman holding there. That one's blocked. Falls to Morgan. Into the middle. That's intercepted. Throw some block. Morgan kept it in. Shot it in the goal outside. Rapino. situation is what ultimately gets the United States freed up inside the 18-yard box. Alex Morgan just closes in on that, gets a deflection, and then picks out the delayed run of Megan Rapino, who's joining in. Here it is, the lengthy touch. Alex Morgan drives in on it and then picks out a perfect pass and finds Megan Rapino. We talk about the injection of youth into this team. Well, it's two veterans getting the job done. And tying this game up, 1-1, sends that back across the recovery run of Fromes. Sixty-third international goal couldn't have come at a better time for Rapino in the U.S. But all the work done by Alex Morgan to keep a play alive that others thought was dead. getting it forward from distance and Yomi that's blocked stays with it that's blocked as well move back the other way Germany first to the ball Uberdorf belt cap Left there, blocked by the U.S. All the way back into the Germany half, where it goes back to goal. Frums up the middle, somewhat risky, but she got it there. And Yomi, another player from Eintracht Frankfurt. Headed away by Morgan. So Alex Morgan didn't score, but she sets up Megan Rapino with a game-tying goal. And here we are in the 88th minute with the game still on the line. From Beagle. Cutting in the middle. No one's closing. Pass blocked by Dunn. 
Chicago. Blocked. LeBron picking it up. You LeBron. What a good angle that's cleared away by Coffey. Crystal Dunn to the left. Lupino switching it. Robin has to come back for it. Dorson back to Frooms. 1 1 result in the 89th minute. Same two teams Sunday at Red Bull Arena. Lapina with a game tying goal. In the circle, blocked. Foul on the U.S. Quick restart from Uberdorf. Well done. Brown on the left, in the box, has an angle, in front, Kuhnigl, 2-1 Germany. <laughs> Incredible ending, or seem, seemingly ending goal by Kuhnigl. And it's just a heads-up play by Orbador. She puts her hands on it, it's the quick restart, and this is the pace of Brand. Not only does she get the edge on Alana Cook, but she also bodies her off, holds her off that pressure, and lays a perfect ball across that back line of the United States, who is still trying to recover and get back into position. And then it's just the easy put away from Krim Beagle, who gambled with her partner and arrived in the box to put Germany up 2-1. I mean, the United States is going to be holding their head over this one. You cannot disengage. The ref blows the whistle. You've got to be aware of what's happening in and around you. And Oberdorf, just quicker to it, gets the ball back in play. And Germany makes the United States pay. Fresh legs, the two subs, two of the six that Germany used, have collaborated on this big goal. Four minutes, got it on in stoppage time. Right there to the box. That's blocked. Is there another goal left in this game? Rupino on the outside, pushing it right. Puerta into the box, but let it go. And there still could be twists and turns in this one left, JP, but so often we're going to wrap this one up and say there's the mentality of the United States. They fight back. They tie the game up 1-1. One, one. Does that feel like a, a positive result for the U.S.? Probably not, but at least they fought their way back into the match. And here comes Germany with the answer and the go-ahead goal. You know, these are scripts that, that we often don't write when we're talking about the United States. Ball is played wide. From Beagle, that's blocked. We're in the second minute of stoppage time. Rapino under pressure. Magul plays it back. Can Germany close this out? Said the U.S. have not lost three consecutive games since 1993. Not conceded multiple goals in three straight games since 2001. While there was talk about not being happy with their performance in the attacking third of the field. This is a team that prides itself on defense and getting shutouts and to give up multiple goals in three straight games. They'll be looking at a lot of videotape on this. Yeah, and we do have to give credit to this German side because they do have yeah. personality players out there. Oberdorf being one of them. Some of these players off the bench have made an instant impact. Yeah, Oberdorf is the starter. Just tonight, she's at some. Exactly, exactly. And Brand started in that final in the Euros against England on that left team side, and that was just a glimpse of what she could do. Coffee's under pressure. Germa. Overshot done. Knocked out by Germany. And you can see Vlaco is urging Germa. 
to play more direct. They're inviting the pressure of Germany to come forward if they play done in that situation. Now you've got to get the ball forward. You don't have time to waste. You need to put this back line under pressure. Get Taylor Korniak inside the 18. Get her service. Coffey squaring it. About a minute and change left. Puerta. Cut in. Overshot Coffey with that pass. Krumbeagle into the middle. The U.S. will get it back. And they go long, direct, but off target. Ali, how would you summarize this game for us? I think lack of final product in the final third is the first thing that jumps out. And, and you start to look at the United States and how they've gone about it. I get, still get concerned at their inability to control in midfield. You've had amazing moments from Rose Lavelle and how she can imprint on this game and the lack of production that ensued from some of those moments that she created. But, but the midfield, where is it? How are they dictating play? You know, the decision-making in, in terms of that final third. You know, puts it in the space. They have to go back and really evaluate, you know, what that style of play looks like. Where is the freedom? Who has the freedom? Who is going to hold down the fort defensively and provide that solidity in the center of the park? This is a big win for Germany, and you could say a big loss, too, for the U.S., not used to losing, as we said. Three straight for the first time since 1993. It's a two-to-one final. Germany with the win over the United States. Game-winning goal scored by Krummigel in the 89th minute on the assist from Braun. The two subs collaborated on that very big and important goal for Germany. Same two teams meet again Sunday at Red Bull Arena. We've got the Women's World Cup coming your way. It begins July 20th, 2023 in Australia and New Zealand. The group games for the USA, the first three games in that group stage, will be played in New Zealand. That'll do it for us. Thank you for joining us for tonight's coverage here on FS1. It's a 2-1 to win, Germany over the United States for Ali Weidner and our entire crew. I'm JP Della Camera. So long. Thanks, everyone.